Hello everyone, and welcome to my channel again. In today's video, I will delve into a fundamental topic for anyone managing a Windows Server environment, which is how to set up DHCP failover recovery on Windows Server 2025. Ensuring high availability of the DHCP service is critical to maintaining uninterrupted network operations. Imagine the magnitude of the problems if your primary DHCP server goes down without failure recovery. Devices on your network will be unable to obtain IP addresses, resulting in massive outages. This is where DHCP failover recovery comes in. Whether you run a small office or a large enterprise, this feature is essential for reliability and redundancy. Okay, let's get started. Before anything to configure DHCP failover, you will need two Windows Server 2025 machines with the DHCP role installed and configured. Now I am on the primary server and I am logged in as a domain administrator as administrative privileges are required to set up DHCP failover. And this server, I have installed and configured the DHCP role on it before. Click on Tools and from there select DHCP. After opening the DHCP management console, Expand the server node in the left pane and expand IP version 4 to make sure the DHCP role is configured correctly. This is my primary DHCP server, which is the server that actually hosts the active DHCP scope. I have configured DHCP server before, and I will leave you a link in the description to know how to configure it successfully. And the next step is to move to the new second server. The second server does not have a DHCP role, so I will install the DHCP role on it. From Server Manager, click on Manage in the upper right corner of the window and select Add Roles and Features. From drop-down menu, on Before You Begin page, click Next, and to specify the installation type, select the Role-Based or Feature-Based Installation option and click Next. Then select Server on which you want to install the DHCP role and click Next. And on the Server Roles page, select DHCP Server, then click Add Features in the pop-up window and click Next. Do not select anything on the Features page unless additional features are needed and click Next. Then click Next on the DHCP Server page, then review the selected server and the DHCP Server role. Then click Install to start the installation process. It will take a few minutes to install the DHCP server role. Once finished, click on the Close button. Then click on Server Manager Notifications and click on Complete DHCP Configuration to complete the remaining steps of configuring the DHCP server. The wizard will ask you to authorize the server in Active Directory, where the DHCP setup automatically creates two security groups, DHCP Administrators and DHCP Users. Click Next to continue. Here the wizard will ask you to authorize the server in Active Directory. If you are logged in with a user account that has the necessary permissions, such as a domain administrator, you can click on Commit to authorize the server. If your account does not have sufficient permissions, you will need to provide credentials for a user with domain administrator privileges. Then click on Menu and select DHCP to open the DHCP Management Console. When you expand the server node, in the left pane and expand IP version 4, there is no scope and I will not create a new scope, but I will bind the DHCP server to the primary server on which the scope was created and set up failure recovery for the primary scope. Back to primary DHCP server and from DHCP management console, right click on the current scope under IP version 4 and select configure failover from context menu. In case you have more than one scope and want to failover for all scopes, Right-click on IP version 4 itself and select Configure Failover. The Configure Failover option starts the process of creating a synchronization relationship between the primary and secondary DHCP servers. You can cancel the Select All option and select only the desired scope or select all scopes if you want and have more than one scope, then click Next. In this step, select the partner server where you are required to enter the host name for the secondary DHCP server. So click Add Server, then click Browse and select the name of the partner or secondary server. Then click the Next button. In this step, a new failure recovery relationship is created 
and the failure recovery mode and settings are configured. Relationship name is the name used to define the failure relationship between two DHCP servers. A logical name that allows you to manage and distinguish between failure relationships, especially if you have multiple DHCP servers or multiple failure configurations in your environment and is intended for purely administrative purposes. It does not affect the functionality, but should be meaningful and descriptive. It is best to enter a name that reflects the role or location of the servers involved so that you can easily identify it later. Another option we have is maximum client lead time. This is the maximum time in minutes that a partner server can lease an IP address to a client without confirming the lease information with the other server in a failover relationship. The default value is one hour or 60 minutes, as you see. That is, the partner server can assign IP addresses to clients during this time. Once the connection is restored, the lease information is synchronized. Here I recommend leaving it at the default of 60 minutes, unless you have specific requirements. Decreasing it may cause synchronization issues, while increasing it may delay recovery from potential conflicts. Next, we have the mode, where this mode determines how the two DHCP servers share the responsibility of assigning IP addresses and managing leases. Here you have two modes, load balance and hot standby. I will explain how each mode works so you can choose the right option for you. First, load balance, which is the best for me. When choosing this mode, both servers actively assign IP addresses to clients based on the load distribution ratio. I prefer it because this mode is ideal for high availability and ensures equal use of server resources. This mode determines how the DHCP load is distributed between the two servers. For example, the primary server might handle 70% of the requests and the secondary or partner server might handle 30%, but the default load distribution is 50% for both servers. One advantage of this mode is that it allows you to specify the percentage of DHCP requests that each server will handle. This is useful if one server has more resources or better network connectivity and can handle a larger share of the workload. If you choose this mode, set the percentage based on the capabilities and performance of both servers. The second mode, which is hot standby mode, sets one server as the active server and the other as the backup server. In this mode, the primary server handles 100% of the DHCP workload and thus responds to DHCP discovery requests, assigns IP addresses, and maintains lease records for all clients in the network, in short, thus acting as the sole provider of DHCP services. The secondary server remains in standby mode, which means it is idle and not actively involved in daily DHCP operations. The secondary server constantly monitors the health of the primary server through a failure recovery relationship. If the primary server fails or becomes unreachable, the secondary server automatically takes over and starts making DHCP requests. Once the primary server is back online, it can either automatically or manually resume its role as the active server. Depending on the configuration and the load ratio for this standby mode, which is either active or standby, thus the active server typically handles 100% of the workload and the standby server handles 0%. Now you can choose the mode that suits you and your server resources, but my advice to you is to choose the load balance mode based on experience. Next, we have the state switchover interval option, which specifies the time after which the partner server will take over if it detects the failure of the primary server. In other words, when the primary server becomes unresponsive, the partner server waits this period before taking over the active role. The default setting is usually 60 minutes, and you can adjust it based on your needs. Use the default setting unless you want to detect a failure faster. I also have the option Enable Message Authentication for DHCP Filov. Always enable this option to ensure a secure connection between the two servers. This is especially important in environments where security is a priority as this option adds a layer of security to the failover connection by preventing unauthorized servers or devices from interfering with the DHCP failover process. Finally, the shared secret is a password-like string used by DHCP servers to authenticate failover messages. It acts as an authentication mechanism for failover connections. 
The shared secret must be identical on both servers for the failover relationship to work successfully. Without it, both servers will reject each other's failover messages. Make sure to enter a strong and secure password. Avoid using simple or predictable strings. Then click on Next button. Then review all the settings in the summary window. To confirm the failure recovery details, click the Finish button to apply the configuration, then wait for the wizard to complete the failure recovery setup, and finally click the Close button. Now the configuration and apply failure recovery on the primary DHCP server is complete, and by moving to the second server and through the DHCP management console on the secondary DHCP server, select IP version 4 and click the Refresh, then expand IP version 4 and you will find that the DHCP scope has already been added to the partner server in the DHCP management. In an upcoming video, I will go into more detail about how the secondary server works during a failure recovery scenario. I will explain how it seamlessly distributes and reserves IP addresses to devices when the primary server is down, ensuring continuous network connectivity. Configuring failover for your DHCP server is a critical step in ensuring high availability and reliability in your network. A properly configured failover relationship guarantees that your clients continue to receive IP addresses and other vital configuration settings even if the primary server experiences an unexpected failure. This reduces downtime, minimizes disruptions, and keeps your network running. Thank you for watching. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, and share it. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comments section. Thanks again for watching, and see you in the next video.